Breaking news, my country people. Atiku dares the federal government to release details of petrol landing costs and pricing templates. Hi guys, welcome back to the news. If you're just joining us for the first time, you're very much welcome. I sincerely appreciate your presence. Kindly subscribe and please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Thank you. The former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has dared the All Progressive Congress led federal government to publish the landing cost of petrol as well as the pricing template being used by the government to keep the cost of petrol at less than 640 per liter. The former vice president made the demand in a statement by his special assistant on public communication, Mr. Frank Shaib. The statement was in a reaction to another one by the National Publicity Secretary of the APC, Felix Mocha. Article 8 said the government claimed that the petrol sector had been deregulated was a fat lie and that subsidy was still being paid secretly. He added the Petroleum Industry Act mandates the total deregulation of the petroleum sector. The, de the, the regulation regime has no room for price control. So if the APC is saying subsidy is not back, then they should explain how petrol is still being sold at less than 650 per liter when the international price of crude oil is about $49 per barrel and the exchange rate on the IE window is seven eighty to a dollar, and on the parallel market, which is the black market, one thousand per dollar. So how is it that diesel, which has been deregulated, currently costs about one thousand per liter, while petrol is still over twenty five percent less? So. Let the APC government explain this to Nigerians and they should stop peddling lies. Shayib uh, said the APC led government had continually admitted failure by going ahead to sack and detain some of the former president Mohamed Buhari's appointees. He added that the same APC that praised Godwin Emefili for eight years and deceive Nigerians with propaganda and their so-called agricultural revolution have gone ahead to sack the same Emefili and have detained him for four months. The same APC that claimed to have fought corruption have now gone ahead to detain a man in charge of the anti-corruption war, Abdul Rashid Bawa, for four months. You can see that these people are nothing but barefaced liars and deceivers. Tinibu claimed he wanted to cut the cost of governance, yet he appointed 48 ministers, out of which 10 are from his, his region. Yet the APC claims he is running a fair administration. This is quite laughable. Adam Soshomole even said last month that Tinibu inherited a bad situation. How can a maggot criticize the fly that, birth, that gave birth to Ritz? The head of the former vice president asked the PDP to do more on governance rather than propaganda, adding that the patience of Nigerians was already running out. Adding Wole Edu said recently the last time Nigeria's economy did well was 10 years ago. It was 10 years ago. And that was under the regime of uh, the, the former president, uh, Goodluck Jonathan. That is an administration of failure that the APC represents. Under the watch of the blood-sucking party, the APC, poverty has reached unimaginable heights. Nigeria has even lost its crown as the largest producer of oil in Africa. What a shame. Oh. What a big shame. Shaib said Tinibu ought to apologize to Nigerians for lying about a proposed meeting with the United States President Joe Biden 
instead of trying to offer lame excuses. I mean, talking on the G20 summit in India is what the APC is now describing as a meeting with binding and tenable. Well, it is indeed shameful. The statement from the presidency said the meeting would take place on the sidelines of the UNGA in, in New York. It is obvious that the so-called meeting only existed in the minds of Tinibu and his paid writers. He left the UNGA empty-handed and traveled to Paris without even informing Nigerians of his whereabouts. This is a very big joke, and it is a joke of the century. Ever since Tinibu claimed he removed false uh, subsidy payments, why is it that till now Nigerians are still you know, buying for at about 620 per liter. Why is it that the price of fuel have not increased? And Tinibu's government recently admitted to the fact that the government is trying to stabilize the price of fuel. Now, if the government is trying to stabilize the price of fuel, isn't that similar to fuel subsidy payments? Isn't that, isn't it similar to, you know, bringing back subsidy payments gradually? Or isn't it similar to the fact that the government has secretly, you know, paying this uh, fuel subsidy? Because it is obvious, with the current uh, hike in dollar, that is now the dollar is on the high side. As expected, the price of crude oil, the price of uh, petrol, diesel and all of that would increase. But... People are still buying fuel for about 620, 615 per liter. So how come the Tinibus led government they are saying they are not paying for subsidy, but they recently admitted that the government is trying to make the price stable. That means uh, sec uh, secretly, fuel subsidy has come back. That subsidy payment is back. So my country people, what are your thoughts on this? The PDP, yes, is an opposition party and they are trying their best to get everything they would use to taunt Tinibu, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The PDP, as expected, is ought to criticize the ruling All Progressive Congress. They act as a watchdog against the APC. So it is the work of the opposition to criticize the APC. And this is what they are really doing. Now, criticisms from the opposition party is the main point of any democracy. And that's what the PDP is doing. That's what Atiku is doing. So, my country people, what are your thoughts on this? I'm dropping here. Kindly share your thoughts concerning this in the comment section. Thank